Uh, you know, one of those expectations is all about how you make the full HD computing experience mobile, as opposed to the traditional view of, well, how do you just make the computer mobile? Uh, cloud computing has an element of the answer here. Cloud computing has gotten a lot of attention over the last 18 months. We've seen major initiatives launched by Microsoft, Google, and Amazon all aimed at this space. So the idea here, of course, is that instead of installing and launching software on a desktop computer or a notebook computer, cloud computing allows us to run applications remotely while we're connected through the internet. Now these are software surfaces, uh, services that run on the web. All you need is a browser. They don't need to be downloaded or installed or anything like that. And this has really turned into quite a paradigm shift. As a matter of fact, Google CEO Eric Schmidt famously predicted that at some point in the future, 90% of all applications are eventually going to move into the cloud. So that leaves 10% of the applications that maybe won't end up in the cloud, or maybe not. So to help demonstrate how we can bring cloud computing to the remaining 10% of the applications, I'd like to ask Jules Erbach to join us again on stage. Jules. So Jules, welcome back. Thank you, Derek. So we talked about this uh, potentially last 10% of applications that might not be able to move on the cloud. What, I, what applications are we talking about? Why is it so hard? Well, we're talking about really a small group of applications that, that mean a lot to, I think, a lot of people here. We're talking about games and virtual worlds, things that are really graphically in intensive and use a lot of computing power to render. Um, and that's traditionally required more than just bandwidth to stream an image. It's required a lot of computing power on the servers. And uh, that's something that is very difficult to do server side. We'd like to show a clip of uh, the Hancock Blu-ray disc running in the cloud. And the first thing you'll notice is that this is all running in a web browser. There's no video codec. There's no application here. This is just a web page. But the Blu-ray disc is in that web page. And any device that can host a web browser can host that Blu-ray movie. So the disc itself essentially isn't being used here. It's streaming in through the cloud. And if you have a device that's smaller than a disk, well, finally, you can actually get the Blu-ray features onto that device. So that's the magic of cloud computing. I mean, you get an experience like you'd enjoy at home in your living room, but you get it wherever you happen to be, right? But I think there's a greater story to tell here. And let's take a look at some of these machines and take a look at what we can really do in the cloud. Now, the first thing I'd like to show is that if we start linking together these graphics processors, we can start to render things that are more complex than just one light stage head. What about rendering that city that we saw in that earlier demo? You can see on this Yukon system here, uh, it's actually rendering the Ruby demo that we created for you guys. This is a gigabyte's worth of data that is streaming in live into this device. Um, on this browser here, we have another virtual world uh, that I'm controlling live through, uh, through the web browser. And this world is running essentially without anything other than just, the, just HTML. And I can change the time of day. I can change the, uh, the scale of the city. Uh, any, any of these things are possible. And you can also see it's running on this ultra-portable device. The cloud streams these, these worlds into, uh, into any device. And the cloud itself has a lot of possibilities. You're seeing artwork that we've created for our commercials or our demos. But this can be used to bring in movie content. And we've, in fact, worked with a lot of visual effects companies, such as Sony Imageworks and ILM. Set this up a little bit. Um, let me tell you about where we're headed next. Um, we have a long track re record, AMD does, in the supercomputer computing area. Uh, as a matter of fact, AMD technology is actually at the heart of seven of the 10 world's fastest supercomputers. And in fact, the world's two fastest computers on the planet are both based on AMD Opteron technology, each of those supercomputers clocks in at a petaflop of performance. That's 1,000 trillion floating point operations per second. How does that sound? It sounds unprecedented. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. Uh, today, we're pleased to announce that we're coming up with a new kind of supercomputer. It's unlike one that's ever been built. Uh, it will break the one petaflops barrier and be able to process a million compute threads at the same time across 1,000 GPUs. Uh, we anticipate that this is going to be the fastest graphics supercomputer that the world has ever seen, and it's going to be powered by Jules's Otoy software for the singular purpose of making HD cloud computing a reality. Uh, we call it the Fusion Render Node. Uh, the initial stage of this system is expected to be available in the second half of 2009, and with this petaflop system, we're going to be seeing the CPU, the GPU, and everything in between operating together as a cohesive whole. Now, the other thing to, uh, to note here is we're not just breaking speed records. Uh, we're really changing computer fundamentals. This new petaflop machine is going to consume one-tenth the power 
of the world's fastest supercomputer that exists today, but deliver comparable performance. It'll fit in a single room, won't require an entire building, and we're gonna be able to upgrade it continuously, which is not something that's possible with uh, previous architectures. So Jules, what more should we add? Well, you know, I, I agree, I think it's really cool. It's another example of fusion in action. Um, you know, maybe before we bring our next guest out, we can have uh, one more demonstration of the sort of experiences that we're talking about uh, on HD cloud computing. All right, How about one more? It. Unlike the last one, we didn't create this game. We didn't create this content. This is actually Mercenaries 2, uh, published by Electronic Arts. It's one of their newest titles. And let me explain something to you. This is running in the cloud. This is an HTML page. I, if I were to be so bold as to hit the refresh button, you'll see how quickly this loads. Now, this game ships on a disk. You have to spend 40 minutes installing it. If you were to download it, it could take hours. But the experience of playing it, and we're playing it in a web page. There's nothing else that's running this other than HTML. That's available on your iPhone. That's available on your BlackBerry. And all of a sudden, we're taking the world's, one of the world's most complicated games, and we're putting it in a web page. And that's huge. It's, it's like you're playing the game on your computer, but it's streaming through the cloud. If we can put a game like this in the cloud, we can put any application in the cloud. Hey, Jules, thanks again. It's really it's my terrific. pleasure, Derek. Thanks.